Hello everybody, this is Brad here, and I'm heading east to Lincoln, and let's move right along. Well, we are on the interstate, you can see all these trees out here. Here we got probably some haze around the sewer area. Currently in, entering Lincoln. I'll spend it two to three nights down there. And unfortunately, it's supposed to be snowing. Not a good thing either. In the springtime, too. shower here.
gauge. I'm going to get off this exit. I will see you guys tomorrow. You guys have a good day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the snow. Bye bye for now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just leaving my brother's house. It's snowing. <laughs> they have not. Winter has not been. good in April but it's it's winter it sounds like it's winter time so far it's just wet I'm currently at the bowling alley, so I'm going to be doing some strikes and and spares. So, good luck. <laughs> Look at all these birds out here. Look at that. Holy cow. Well, at least I had fun. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And take care. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. This is Brad here. On this cold Saturday morning in April. I'm heading to Weatherfest. Maybe I'll go get, I'll get, go get uh, uh, coffee. And, and then I'll just head on from there. I will see you soon. I am here at the UNL Innovation Campus. We're we'll doing some weather fest out here. Thank <laughs> you.
25 years, maybe I'd get a shot of it. And what happened is the mint wanted to do something different about it. Right, right. You want, you want the other side? Yeah. yeah. Go for it. The mint wanted to do something different. That, that looks pretty. 225 impressive. years. And they said, well, we're going we're gonna to put a P on it and not tell the public. So they started minting them in March last year. Then in April, people were finding them in the mint uh, back east, taking it to their coin dealers. And asking them what it was, the coin dealer says, we've never seen them before. So the men finally explained, we wanted to surprise the public and show them what, uh, what uh, the coins, uh, show the public that, uh, that we did put a P on it for the first time. No kidding. For 25 years. Interesting. You can have that one. Oh, sure, thanks. I look. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. This is a root from the trees. Yeah, just um, some soil with a lot of root. Oh, okay. So out of all these, which one do you think would be the warmest based on uh, moisture content, color, shape? I would, I would say sand because of the sun. So the tricky thing about it is 
because of the color of it, you can kind of think of if you wear like a white shirt outside or a, a black shirt, the yeah. darker colors are going to absorb more of the energy. Oh, so okay. you'll find from the two different sands that this one is warmer than, than this and one. And the, uh, the flame sand. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll, this one will still be pretty warm because it's so dry. Mm -hmm. So it still heats up a lot. Oh, okay. So you're, yeah, your plus is the second warmest. Yeah. Yeah, that's so all. the question we have for you is which one of before? I think I can. Yeah, so it's actually frozen CO2. Oh. And so instead of the liquid. So I'm going to save this part for over here. Um, so what happens is, is that it actually gets so cold around here that it brings the, the temperature around here to the dew point or the frost point. So have you ever seen frost before? Yeah. Yeah, so that's basically what's happening like outside of here with all the little water molecules. They're slowing down a lot and they're actually attaching just like frost does to the grass. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, they're moving really slow, and so they're like, um, and so what happens is you can actually, if you feel the table, it's so cold that it's just kind of emitting, it's very cold around it. And so if you put um, any dry ice in here, um, it actually goes directly from a solid to a gas. It's kind of a mix between wow. yeah. and snow. So that's very cold gas and very nice. Yeah, it's very quite staying within this pan. And it's actually cold enough that it's helping condense out some of this water vapor in here. This is what you can see it. It's actually dense enough. Yeah. If you let it build up and then put your hands in here, you can actually kind of scoop out a little bit. Then it's still freezing as it melts. So in other words, it can still burn my finger if I touch it because it's still yes. ice cold. So it actually, if you put it in a clear glass and let it go like this, you can see ice is actually forming around the dry ice oh. as it supplements. Oh. And it's still so yeah. cold. <laughs> okay. Wow. We tried to use one of the little infrared thermometers on the dry ice and it doesn't work. It's too cold for it to... <laughs> Wow. It doesn't know what it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Very and a lot of people have said that they use this for Halloween and stuff. Or, uh, yeah. yeah. So. yeah it looks like a ghoulish type. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little witch's cold. Yeah. Yeah, you can touch like the fog and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll just see. And that's it. Make sure you don't stick your hand in the water. Yeah. Like, it's it's slim. Cold. It just gets really cold. Yeah, so. I, I just barely. Yeah, oh, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. I think you would feel it if anything was wrong. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It just, would actually like burn a little bit. So like, yeah. 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 So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a little wind chill talk here, and then we've got dry ice yeah. over here. So <laughs> Want to see a tornado in a bottle? Yeah. Go okay. for it. So. When you have a thunderstorm that is strong enough to tilt its own axis, mm -hmm. what will happen is it will start rotating. And with the rotation, it will flip this over so you can get some more. Yeah. Um, you'll get a supercell that will possibly create a tornado. It's never a guarantee. And yeah, then they're measured by the enhanced Vegeta scale, which this gentleman next to me will explain. <laughs> the enhanced Vegeta scale is basically uh, what forecasters use to classify tornadoes to estimate their wind speeds. It's thought that their tornadoes are classified based on the amount of damage they cause. Uh, it ranges from EF0, you know, with minimal damage, to EF5, which is catastrophic. Uh, EF0 tornadoes have winds of between 65 and 85 miles an hour. Oh. Uh, yeah, fives have winds over 200 miles an hour. Yeah, but less than less than five percent of all tornadoes are EF4 yeah, or above. Yeah, anything can happen. Even meteorology students, <laughs> how do you even know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of those stink bugs or. Yeah, these are from Nebraska. Oh. It's like two people with a, you know. Yeah, was it the Asian fly or? Yes. I don't know what they call it either. These are tropical insects down here. They're not from Nebraska. Oh, okay. Like one of those locusts and... These are all beetles here. Oh, Asian beetle. I think that's what I... I don't think they're... 
Oh, no, some of them are from South America or Africa. This one's here? South America? I know, that's a spider. That's a giant beetle. Well, these are all beetles here. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure how that, how the big one had, I know spider has some legs. Yeah, no, spiders have more legs, they have eight legs, these have six, that's the way you can tell. Oh, okay. oh I see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Looks different. Can I answer your question? Yeah, Snow and Rain. Yeah. It's a community cooperative rain, hail, and snow network. Mm. Basically, it's uh, about 600 people across Nebraska, about 17,000 people across the U.S. Uh, that take measurements every day and put it in. It's just a volunteer network. Ah, oh, okay. And then we have a web page. You can look at the web page. You can have this. Okay. Um, you, know, you can pull up a map of the state. You can pull up a map of the United States. You can pull it all the way down to a county level. Oh. Okay. And you can see how much rain fell in your area. Yeah. Yeah, I guess snow, I use a ruler. Yeah, but you know, the other thing is you have to melt the snow down to see how much water is in the snow. Oh, that's different. Okay. That was liquid water. Yeah, so if you have a 12 inches of Nebraska snow, how much water would you have? The red one, the green one, or the blue one? I think the blue one. It's actually the red one. And more snow means more liquid. Yeah, but but it's really it's how the ice crystals form and what temperature. And for the most part, there's a lot of air and ice. Oh, I see. And so like when you step on the snow, you always fall down. And you compress it. It's because of all the air in the snow, so it's not much water. Mm. If you went up to Greenland and had glacial ice, yeah. then you'd have something more like this. But this has a lot of air pockets. And, you know, oh, I see. So it doesn't you know it doesn't hold as much water. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? in time lapse project at all? Kind of in a way. Well, well yeah, we have some. Uh, we have our website up here, so we have all our time lapse camera locations. Um, oh, okay. On this map, and you can. Uh, this is our website here, so you can look around and see the individual cameras that we have set up. Uh, hey, where, yeah, where I'm from is <laughs> Warman Island. <laughs> yeah, we got quite a few cameras around that, that area. Wow. St. Hill cranes and all that good stuff. Down there. Sure. Go here, you can. Yeah, it is cool. Don't see that very
Trans Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. That train in Ashland. It's been about a month since I've been out rail fanning. Yeah, I remember last time I filmed trains out here. I also had car trouble at the end of the day, so. Hopefully, I don't have to deal with it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It was a good day to be out. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye for now. Hey, this is Brad here. I'm going to get something to eat real quick and then uh, now I'm on the road. So let's get busy. Yeah, I'm currently at this pilot here. And I'm gonna use the restroom and walk around a little bit before I head home. Here are some clips I did before I did this weekend vlog. And food reviews included. So, there it is. Thanks for watching this video on YouTube. If you like the video on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel and you can visit my blogs at any time and my social media is included and thanks for watching I will see you on my next video bye for now